educate, empower, engage. That's, that's what we want to do with you here today. Hopefully you've got a lot of great information today about the financial market, real estate, mortgage, everything that really fits on that financial wheel we try and cover with you. Anything we miss, we try and put at craigsewing.com. But as far as engaging you, uh, what you've hopefully seen from today's show is we don't have a bunch of disconnected talking heads just regurgitating opinions. We, we truly have the highest level of professionals. These are nationally recognized experts right here in San Diego that can create a turnkey solution for a lot of the questions you have. So I want to just uh, encourage you to, when you go to craigsewing.com, it couldn't be easier. We have a contact form. Complete it. It comes directly to me. I respond to every inquiry we get before my head hits the pillow. If you want to follow us on Facebook, do anything fun like that, please feel free. I think we're at 10,000 fans now and growing, and we appreciate your support. So please do connect with us there, and we'll put all the, the stuff you missed on the show and, and updates throughout the week so you can just really get the daily vitamin of some of the things that are going on and really the things that matter, things that you can actually do something about, not just all of the noise that you hear out in the 24-7 news cycle that we have. All right, so what I've asked our, our elite to do here today is to join me for our, our final segment to create a, a roundtable of advice, just really discussing the topics that we hit on today, some of the things that are really topical in, in a open forum discussing uh, how it affects them, what they're seeing in the marketplace, how people are reacting, and, and bring them all together. So let's go ahead and do that. Gentlemen, welcome back. Thanks, Greg. All right. All right. So let's See do it. So I think in all three of us, in some way, shape, or form, covered. You like how I'm taller than you, all of you? Yeah. We do that on purpose around here. <laughs> <clears throat> all right. So I, we touched the uh, the Bank of America story uh, three times today, right? And there's a, a variety of reasons that, that we touched up on it. Uh, there could be a lawsuit involved. It can affect interest rates. Banks lend money. You're, you're a listing agent. You see these offers come over, and of course. It, you know, it's a, a stock. You can buy it. You can invest in it. So let, let's real quick recap the, the story, and then I'd love to get your guys' just opinion on how you've seen it affect you, if at all. America has major consequences. This is What's News on WSJ Live. I'm Joanne Poe. Bank of America suspends its plans for a $4 billion stock buyback and a dividend boost. This after the second largest U.S. bank by assets says it discovered an error in the way it calculated its capital levels. The mistake is related to securities known as structured securities issued by Merrill Lynch before Merrill was bought by Bank of America in 2009. This means that the bank has less high quality capital than it previously reported. Bank of America brought the mistake to the attention of the Federal Reserve, which is requiring it to resubmit its capital plan. Another medical advance for cloning technology. Researchers say they have created an embryonic clone of a 32-year-old woman with type 1. So about the embryonic clone of the 32-year-old woman, Greg, <laughs> we brought you specifically for I'm this. For <laughs> uh, you know, for, I, I see Bank of America in the headlines a lot. I think the media has uh, a lot of fun shredding them. But they, they you know, they bought Countrywide. Uh, they've had a lot of settlements. As a consumer, uh, you know, d does this story really mean anything to me if I hold Bank of America? Well, they bought Merrill Lynch as well. That's part of how this happened. And Merrill yeah. Lynch had some very bad loans on its books as well as you're aware of. There are a lot of lawsuits that went with that. But really what you're looking at as a consumer and also just as a person in, in our economy is one of the largest entities that exists out there in banking making a math mistake. Well, it just proves how bad the, the transparency is in Wall Street. Wall That's Street right. screwing Wall Street. It's a great story in a sense where the average consumer can look at, hey, the demand a little bit more transparency. I mean, Bank of America can't even look at really what are the toxic assets when they bought it at Merrill Lynch? Yeah. I mean, the structured notes. You see these products all the time getting pitched to individuals that sound really good on the surface, but when you dive in underneath, it's all smoke and mirrors. Well, you get that out of politics, too. Of course. You know, I mean, you get it out of politics. You can certainly get it out of the media. We're getting into campaign season. You're seeing a lot. I mean, you talk about transparency. Obama is supposed to be the most transparent president we've ever had. And, I mean, whether it's the IRS story of Benghazi, I'm not trying to make this a political point, but, I mean, that's what this country lacks. We lack transparency. Uh, you talked about it in financial advising earlier. I mean, explain the, the differences again in the way that you see advisors. You know, I mean, there's so many people who have a financial plan right now that don't know the fees are getting hit, the commission rates. You got 10,000 products out there. I would say maybe 10, 20 percent of people really truly understand what they're paying. I mean, if I'm constructing a portfolio, fees are such a huge drag on the overall performance. Yep. Right, so if you look at today's environment, the new normal, as Bill Gross said, right, when we're talking about interest rates, he's supposed to be the bond king. He has the largest mutual right. fund in the world. And if you look, he's at the 87th percentile. So he can't time markets. He can't pick what's going on. No one can foretell the future. 
So they come up with these elaborate products. And this happened back in 2008 when everyone lost a ton of money. And so Wall Street gets together, the insurance companies get together, and they say, hey, how about guarantees for the rest of your life? Who, was a, who doesn't want guarantees for the rest of your life? But what are you truly paying for those right. guarantees? And run out the numbers. What's your internal rate of return is what you have to look at. Yeah. And as you look and uncover the onion or peel the onion, it just it, it, it it's ripe. It gets. It makes yeah, you cry. It does. That's what onions do. So you know, you can't be an expert on everything. That's why you got to hire experts. Because the truth of it is, what you just said really struck me. I listened to people that talked about stocks in the market, TV and everything else. It's very cursory. They're always got a spin trying to sell you something. And do you really know what you're buying? It's something to think about. Right. And so that's why you need to demand the transparency. That's right. How, how's the advisor or broker getting paid? What are the fees the costs inside of the overall product? How do you product? ask those questions, Joe? What are you getting paid? What are the fees and costs? You straight up ask them. Yes. What if it's an uncomfortable question? Why wouldn't it be uncomfortable? It's your money. You have to ask those questions. You have, right? Yeah. If well, you're telling me real estate, I mean, everything's transparent there, right? Well, here's your commission, here's that, it's black and white, and it's I sign it. It's very transparent in my So world. if I'm yeah, selling you this elaborate portfolio with a bunch of different products in it that sound really good on the surface, but then you ask, okay, well, how do you get paid? Oh, the insurance company pays me. I would run out the door. That's fraud. You pay the commissions. Yeah, interesting. Let's uh, switch gears and talk about interest rates real quick. So we know we have a low interest rate environment. Greg, probably doesn't affect what you do with giving legal advice, but as far as obviously real estate market, certainly financial planning, uh, let's take a look from this week. If you're looking at interest rates, they've been moving lower. Looking at intraday, you could clearly see, but let's hit all the highlights. We're hovering near the lowest yield of the year as evident by the February chart. Going back a year, significant. We were in the low 160s about one year ago in May, and the historic low was July of 2012. To give you some comparison on the history of rates the last several years post-crisis. Last chart, this is wheat, 13-month high. I know there's a lot of people that want to make you... So whether it's short-term interest rates low or you know 30-year mortgage backed security, 10-year treasury, uh, a, a lot of this having to do with stimulus in the economy. We talked about how given uh, QE3 tapering a bit, there's still free marketplace buying. But th these stimulus packages, they, they probably help you as, as far as showing returns for clients. Well, I mean, as a financial... How would that help me, I guess? Well, I mean, if the market's all-time highs, I'm looking at the plan that Joe put together and, and it's up, that's a good thing, right? So I don't know if it necessarily... It's probably the wrong way to word it, but people are looking at their investments and probably pretty happy. Same with, with real estate right now. Well, it depends on what they're holding. Yeah. If I'm holding bonds, am I happy? I mean, we, we, we look at the interest rates, right, are all-time low. So yeah. if over the last four or five years, I've been – here. here's how individuals invest, is that they forget about 2008, and they're like, I want everything in stocks when the market's up 35%. Right. But then when the market corrects – it's like, well, wait a minute, where was the bonds? If you look now, there was a study that was done um, by Hewitt. It's one of the largest custodians and uh, defined benefit plans and retirement plans around the nation. And they did a study, and right now, this year, is the highest individuals are investing in stocks. Hmm. Okay? This year. So why are you late to the party? Where were you in 2009, 2010, 2011, 2000? Right? So then, it's, then you ask the question, well, do I get in now when markets are at all-time highs? Well, that, that well, is well, What's your goals? When do you need the money? Is it five years, 10 years, 15 years? Because the market, capital markets always go up. So am I late to the party? Sure, I'm late to the party, but you still want to go to the party. Yeah. Right? You, you get that analogy. Well, yeah, and, and you certainly see it in real estate as well. I mean, we, we were just talking about interest rates. Mm -hmm. uh, you have low interest rates right now. Uh, the ability to buy a house for pretty much less than you're paying in rent. Right. Is it, is it too late to get to that party? No, I mean, essentially you have to understand the interest rates, there's two sides of the thing in how it drives the real estate market. One is the financial aspect, and we focus on that a lot, yeah. which means you can buy, you, would, you can afford more with lower interest rates, and you can buy more home, and it drives prices up. But the other thing that it really has an impact on is the psychological side of real estate, yeah. which is primarily what residential real estate is based on. And when everyone likes to ask me, you know, how's the market, what are interest rates? You know, it's always their next question, and yeah. they assume when interest rates are low, Things are good, things are happening, and it either prompts them to take action when it comes to buying or selling. So it's a really, you know, news stories like this is a good indicator of uh, how people's perception are. They, they see that, they want to move forward with things, and uh, it really helps. Here's, Todd, a, here's a quick question on that. Do you find people that can afford a certain mortgage per month? So in other words, if the interest rate's lower, they could buy a more expensive home. People come in and say, I want to spend $3,000 a month, whatever the number is, right. and the price point changes based on interest rate. 
Absolutely. Yeah, it can. I mean, the, the unique thing about this marketplace, years ago, if you could qualify, didn't necessarily mean it was affordable and vice versa. Now, sure. qualifying yeah. is so much more difficult that it's probably going to be affordable because you're not usually buying into an adjustable rate or, or, or high debt versus income ratio, uh, ratios on, on a loan product. So usually as that thing moves, if it pushes you, if rates go up and it pushes you out of qualifying, well, it's obviously not comfortable. You don't even qualify. Sure. So it, it's a nice litmus test that wasn't there before. Uh, Dodd Frank, you and I talked about this uh, from a legal point of view. I think everybody can chime in on this one. So uh, Barney Frank, I'm not the guy's biggest fan. You're not? Uh, and I've been pretty vocal about it. I think I call him Bumbling Barney on, on my radio show. Here's a guy that I, I don't feel did anything to pre prevent uh, a housing crash and, and, and nothing that could protect the consumer. And then after the fact, he's creating laws and, and trying to run around with a Superman S on his chest. Uh, so let's take a look real quick. I want to get your comments on legality. And, and Joe, I'm dying to hear what you have to say, how it's affected the uh, financial sector. This week marks the third anniversary of the Dodd-Frank law. Progress has been slow, but the next few months could be an absolute whirlwind. Kayla Tao, she has details for us. Kayla? Bill, a natural segue out of the royal baby. I'm glad that I could do that for you guys. But we are talking <laughs> Dodd-Frank. It is the three-year anniversary. And among the things in Dodd-Frank that have been implemented, the statute of limitations for government lawsuits extended to six years from five. That is going to put Steve Cohen potentially in the crosshairs, but there are still many things that haven't been done in those three years since Washington vowed to fix Wall Street with the act. Which is now Real quick, in a nutshell, Dodd-Frank. Well, we all know why it was created and how it was created to solve the problems that existed. Yep. What's interesting about that, if you look at the IRS code, there's 10 or 15,000 pages of documents. Dodd-Frank is very, very short by, by legislative standards. What that means is there's not a lot of guidance, so people can do a lot of Open things. Open for interpretation. Yeah, it's we kind of called it the Wild West before. I mean, here's the guidelines from 10,000 feet. Go make it happen. And that's why they're exchanging. They're changing statute of limitations and other things by law. And it's kind of uh, moving along and evolving as time goes on. And yep. it's going to change from what it is now. Joe? Yeah, I mean, it's too early to tell. I mean, the, the, it's so hard to get anything pushed through Congress. How, how's it affected the financial industry from, the, from your side of the equation? Well, you know, well, n not much. Does I mean, I think consumers? it will affect. I hope so. Yeah, that's the whole main purpose of yeah. it. But no, it, it's too early to tell. And there's still a lot of things to get weeded out. I think potentially some of the law, um, it's like a pendulum, right? They, 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 right. And it might be spun too hard where it might hurt some small individual um, practitioners in our business that are fee only trying to do the right thing. But that regulation costs might push them out of business, which I'm not a big fan of. Right. But, you know, get the big Wall Street firms, um, have them find. I, I'm fine with that all day long. Yeah. I mean, I want to, we got to get Wall Street back to Main Street. Yeah. And, and get rid of all these crazy products and, and everything else. There's, there's a fine balance. I mean, I, I position myself every day on a radio show as a consumer advocate, so there's nobody I want to go to bat for more than, you know, just the average hardworking American. The question is, is when the government gets involved, who I think creates some of these problems, uh, I feel like their, their good intentions are just more power votes or trying to get, trying to get votes, more political plays. Uh, but are they really there to protect the consumer? And are there unintended consequences where, like, the, the good guy, the professional, or the small business can't keep up? And you're seeing that a lot. Guys, great, great panel. Got to end it today. Thanks for coming on the show and, and doing this roundtable with us. Uh, thank you for tuning into the American Dream. We're going to be again here next Saturday at 10 a.m. Also, don't forget, every day, 6 p.m., KCBQ, 1130 a.m., you can listen to the Craig Sewing Show. And never forget, we're here to answer any questions that you might have, facilitate any, any introductions. Visit me at craigsewing.com today. I'd be happy to help you there. Have a great weekend, San Diego. We'll see you next week.